FOMO is driving up house prices. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I thought we'd have a look at the issue of FOMO driving up house prices and how one property spruker is talking about it. So this is the article that got me interested in this today, written by Michael Yardney. Now, those of you in property following it would know him pretty well. Now, there are a few things I want to look at first. Let's start off by just looking at some of the latest property prices. And these are the asking prices that are coming out of the capital cities. All houses over a million bucks, guys. The weekly asking prices for all houses in all capital cities over $1 million here in Australia right now. Perfectly normal and fine. Three bedders, 930. Two bedders, 580. <laughs> all units, 565. We have a look here at um, weekly asking prices. Uh, what do we have? We've got capital cities. This is nationally. So nationally has gone up as well because that's taking account of all the regional areas. So still nationally over 653,000. Look at this. September, we were 596. Look at that climb. Look at that climb. Look at that climb. E well, even in units. I'm surprised with units, everyone. This data is from SQM as well. And this is the uh, capital city average. Hang on, wait a minute. We've got Melbourne. Here we go. Melbourne, that's what I wanted. A million bucks for all houses. Three bedders, 963. Brisbane, we've got 672 no, and 574. Oh, Sydney, about 1.1. I need to update that chart. So that's where asking prices for property as of today. Now, I want to talk about housing affordability. This is an issue. Before we even look at anything that Michael's putting forward, we need to... <laughs> housing affordability is unquestionably going to be a big political issue at the next election, and it is something that is affecting all of our lives. It is limiting the capacity of our nation because, well, frankly, people won't jump into a house, won't start a family, won't, you know, create a life if they don't have a house, a lot of them. It's kind of sad. But understandable. So let's look at the increase in houses over the last 30 years. You know, if you bought a place in Sydney, now you're about 1.15, 563%. 518 in Melbourne, 400% in Brisbane, 371 in Adelaide, Perth, 400%. Canberra, 500%. Hobart, 520. Hobart's just going nuts. Darwin, 336. Units all the same. Wages. In the same time period, average wages have gone up per week. 322% for men and 335% for women. So nowhere near the 500% some of these places are getting. Darwin's probably the closest. So we can just see that there, everyone. Now, this is a Lorenz curve. This shows us where, what income level, how much property you've had access to, or that's affordable, considering you only spend 30% of your disposable income. At the time this was done, Brisbane and Perth were the only ones that had any. All the rest, you pretty much didn't have any any property that you could get at that percent of your income. Now, I've looked at this. Here's the, the data I used in this next table. This is from the Domain House Price Report. I've looked at housing affordability, everyone. And Sydney 1.2, Melbourne uh, 936, yada, yada, yada. But if we have a look here, this is showing you, I've just mapped, updated this this morning. A percent of your weekly earnings to pay a mortgage on average wage for one person. And this is, a, I think, I calculated a, with a, a, depending on how much deposit you have. But still, have a look at this, everyone, for an average person. Uh, it gets better with a couple, but Victoria, you'd be in mortgage stress. In New South Wales, you'd be in mortgage stress. In Queensland, you're not quite. Tasmania, you're approaching it. Western Australia at 20%, Northern Territory at 19%, South Australia at 24% of your income, everyone. Now here they're saying affordable on disposable income where the, the rule of mortgage stress is your gross income. So it's even worse than this. So this is with a couple, everyone. So still in New South Wales, you're approaching it, guys. You're approaching mortgage stress. Queensland, you're okay. Victoria getting up there. Even Tassie getting up there. Tassie is now the same as Queensland and South Australia, everyone. So housing affordability certainly is an issue here in Australia. And the government has been to the rescue, guys. 
This is what I want to reiterate. What we're seeing happen in the economy now is because, well, our government has juiced up the market. They're keeping zombie companies alive. They're doing a few things. Then our, our debt, our debt, state, federal, one and a half trillion dollars. Okay, so don't, don't think that there's some miracle that's happening here that our economy is going well and that we've gotten through all of the, these recessions. You know, this recession, we're, we're completely unscathed. The government has just juiced the bloody economy to the moon, everyone. They've, all of Rudd's stimulus spending is nothing compared to what's happened now. It's crazy. So if, you're, if you think it's all good and normal, I, I, I don't understand where you're getting the information from. So they're allowing people, they're keeping zombie companies alive. They're allowing trading while it's all in provisions. This is companies entering external administration. We're seeing it's been trending down, particularly because of, particularly because of just the interventions. 5,000 insolvencies are expected, everyone. Just if we go back from, we're sitting about 1,000 now, if we go back up to where we normally were, that's going to increase. Just normal times. These were good times. Well, there were okay times if you look at it per capita per GDP. But still, JobKeeper, 9% of the Victorian workforce nearly was supported by it. That's ended now. They're juicing the market. Cash rate at uh, what 0.1%. 3% used to be an emergency. Home builder. And we'll look at the number of home builder applicants that have taken advantage of this. If, you're, you know, if your argument for home builder is getting economic activity, then it has been an outrageous success. It has really worked. But the problem is it's overheating the market, as we saw yesterday in the um, construction index from AI Group and HIA. Cost of goods, particularly freight, is going up. You know, it's wages, you know, are going up, but they're not putting full time people on. You got eighty eight thousand dollar grants when you combine some of the stuff. Five percent government guaranteed loans, soup withdrawals and negative gearing as a long term issue. This is gonna be an interesting election. We need to start talking about these things because you're having a generation that's completely priced out of the market. And this is the home builder applicants. Uh, it's gonna I bet you it'll tick up when the latest data comes in. From the end of March, this is the middle of the March. But you've got Western Australia, 14,000, uh, 345 only in NT, 20,000 with change in Queensland. So we had more applicants than New South Wales. Wow, that's, that's surprising. I didn't think Queensland would be, would be beating New South Wales, particularly with our popular, but the, uh, population, but there you go. Victoria, 26. Adelaide, or South Australia, sorry, there's more to South Australia than just Adelaide, Florian. South Australia, just shy of 10 and nearly 3,000 or 27 down in Tassie. So you can see here, and you've got to think, every one of these applicants, if it goes ahead, they, have, they are going to have to spend at least an additional $150,000, if not more, on their projects. So that's what it is. This is juicing up the market. And you've got to think, well, why doesn't the government just do it all the time? Because they're $1.5 trillion in debt, guys. They're going to, they may be juicing it up now, but they're going to milk the money out of us later. We've got reducing housing supply due to councils limiting developments and also that the NIMBY crowd, not in my backyard, or the anti-gentrification crowd, or the Greens just opposing development. You've got mortgage holidays, which, well, are completely unnatural, but there you go. They put them in place. No foreclosures till September and savings, uncertainty in the market. You know, we were asking people, why, uh, you know, why won't you sell? And they go, well, because um, it's a booming market. Apparently no one's selling. Landlords are getting out, particularly in Victoria. But, you know, other places, supply is down. And what some people are saying in the comments is, no, I uh, why would I sell? Then I'll just, I'll have to pay stamp duty. I'll have to do this. I'll have all the stress. And then I'll, I'll still get something that's gone up too. So for an owner-occupier going from one home to another, it's sometimes not worth it. And, you know, the green change, we saw regional prices going up as well. So FOMO is driving up property prices. Let's have a look now with an understanding of the latest prices, housing affordability and the government coming to the rescue. Let's look at this article that Michael has put forward. And so Yardney, he is a author and, you know, he's a property spruker. This is his thing. You know, he advocates for property, building wealth on property. So, which, you know, there's, there's a, a few arguments for and against it. I, I'm, I'm concerned that we're too obsessed with property as a means to build wealth here in Australia, and that's leading to a decline in economic complexity. And I will bring up this 
is not here to show you. This is the economic complexity of our country. That's to do with what we're exporting, what we're manufacturing here in Australia. It has gone down from 40 to, what is it, 80, 79, just above 80 here in, yeah, 82 or something. These are other countries. That's Japan. Look at Japan. Hasn't budged. You know, other countries with similar, similar GDP to us. They haven't changed at all. We've crashed. We've plummeted. And my argument is that government intervention is incentivizing people to go into property and not invest in other things. So let's have a look at what Michael is saying about this. Because, well, FOMO is just going crazy. People are uh, fearful of missing out. And you can see in the media, all the, all the pundits, everyone talking, just talking up property. It's going hot. And, well, with the potential for, I, I asked a, I did a poll, everyone. I asked you, what would Aussies buy? If the average normal Australian was worried about inflation, what do you think they would buy with their money? And most people said property, everyone. And I haven't updated that link. It's still live. And one person wrote quite a good comment. Um, if uh, average Aussie and then ignored everything else, answer property <laughs> every time. <laughs> I mean, we're property obsessed here in, in this country, guys. Are people going into property perhaps because they're fearful of inflation or they think this is their only chance to get in? Because you've got generations of people that only know property going up pretty much. We had a slight dip in last year. And are they thinking, you know, is this psychologically, they're thinking that's the only chance they think they've missed out, so they've got to get in. What if it's a dead cap bounce, guys? What if it's down, up, down again? Anyway. Our property market has been surging this year with double-digit growth in sight for all capital cities. So why? what's the incentive then to invest in a business, to deal with all the BS, the red tape, and the, the risks that you take on? And now that more Australians feel secure about our economy in general and their jobs in particular, this will only place more impetus on the market. I recently had someone suggest our housing market's are on a Mexican wave. Like what happens at the cricket or football when they used to allow people to go to the MCG. One person starts and another joins until the whole crowd has their hands up in the air and that circular intensity builds and builds. And this is showing itself as FOMO, fear of missing out. When home buyers and investors are scared, the market is running away from them. They feel they must get into the market. And this is showing with ever secondary pro even secondary properties selling well above their vendors expectations i mean there you go that's the issue guys can i highlight there yeah i can normally at the beginning of the property cycle there is a fight to quality or a flight to quality people remember the types of properties that held their value well during the downturn and avoid secondary properties but currently i'm seeing home buyers so worried the market is going to pass them by that they're compromising their selection criteria just to get into the market. FOMO. Yeah, I, I can imagine he's seeing that. Unfortunately, we've seen how do, you, how do you send up when the market eventually slows down. And it's not always a pretty sight. Or how do you end up when the market eventually slows down? This chart explains why there's so much FOMO in the market. So new listings... For the rolling 28 days, well, there you go. Total listings rolling 28 days. This is us here. Listings are down. And we've, see, we've looked at that. I mean, one that's quite dramatic, everyone that I will show you here, that just, you know, that just rams at home is Hobart. Look at the total listings just from a few years ago, just continually going down, 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 down. So, yeah, guys. But then, I mean, why? if you're in a home, why would you sell? Why would you put up with all that risk, all that pain, all those issues when you're just going to have it at the other end? Someone was saying in the comments, he had a friend who sold property, you know, had to deal with it, and then ended up paying almost as much for a little apartment somewhere. And if we get inflation, we're, we're you know, we've got the RBA. The RBA doesn't care about housing, guys. The RBA doesn't care about housing. I'll bring up this quote. You know, the RBA will not raise rates to slow the housing boom. There are various tools and other 
higher interest uh, than other other than higher interest rates to address these concerns, leaving monetary policy to maintain its strong focus on the recovery in the economy, jobs and wages. That's not their focus. They don't care about housing. So I wouldn't be counting on them coming into the rescue to address it. So what happens? They've agreed to do infinite QE. We know that. They're going to intervene in the market to maintain the bond rate at the target they want to. And every time they increase, pump more money in, that's technically the old school definition of inflation where will it manifest where does everything manifest in australia what are we all, all obsessed with i'll give you I'll let you let you guess that one while i have a shot of coffee the strength in our housing market is underpinned by a disconnect between supply and demand just look at the charts above core logic report uh, national total listings the stock of properties for sale on the market over the four weeks to the end of march showed a 25.5 percent below the five-year average People aren't listing. This is because buyer demand is so intense that it is outstripping the ability for sellers to put their properties on the market. The ratio of sales to new listings is sticking at about 1.1, implying every new listing added to the market, 1.1 homes are sold. This in turn keeps the overall inventory levels low, fueling a sense of FOMO among buyers. So don't get caught out. I can understand why buyers are concerned with the markets running away so quickly, especially first home buyers who are not bringing a trade into the market. However, established home buyers are also usually sellers and will benefit as the value of their existing home increases. So don't get caught out and make some of the mistakes I'm seeing um, buyers make because of FOMO. So let's have a look at these mistakes he's listed. Number one, compromising on location. Desperate to get into a particular suburb, some buyers are now looking at buying on or too close to main roads or train lines or flood prone areas rather than buying in an adjoining suburb they can afford. I mean, this the flood prone one here is particularly quite quite concerning. We all we remember that article we went through about a guy who bought a property in a flood prone area and now it's been completely flooded out and destroyed, but he couldn't afford the insurance. The insurance premiums are so high, and I mean, he bought into it. He did it. <laughs> That's the thing. You gotta, you gotta be sensible about this stuff, guys. And now he's got nothing, or he's got a house that's that's not livable. Overspending. FOMO is causing some buyers to take financial risks by exceeding their budgets or spending their last cent to get into this market, and they have nothing left over for the inevitable expenses that occur when moving home. We saw that with the flood guy, the flood example. And, but remember, don't you want to overspend to pay above reserve to get into the newspaper? That's what you've got to do. Avoiding due diligence. In a rush to beat the competition, some buyers are waiving cooling off periods or not conducting essential building and pest inspections or strata searches. Well, yeah, now that's, that's, that's just insane if you're avoiding that. Ignoring repairs and defects. Other buyers are biting off more than they can chew and end up purchasing properties with structural issues that are likely to lead to problems. They should have avoided and potentially huge repair bills. Well, I did that intentionally <laughs> to get a really cheap property, but the market wasn't as crazy then. The guy in, who sold me this place had three offers fall through. I said, I, you know, I didn't get a building and pest. I got a structural engineer that came out and said, yeah, you got a year, Florian, until she'll fall over. And well, it's been five and it hasn't fallen over. <laughs> but you know buying off the plan okay despite knowing new and off the plan apartments make poor investments some buyers are hoping the market continues to rise to cover the premium they paid for buying this type of secondary pop property well i i am 100 percent in agreement with michael on this one i am not a fan of the idea of buying off the plan purely because i draw those type of plans and i've seen i was shocked as a student I was working for these firms and they were doing just these these sketch designs uh, and the people were selling them they were selling them because there's so many changes that occur from a concept design to actually build the thing you, you know your walls may change everything may change and the way they set it up they, they're allowed to change it it's a great time to remember the quote from rod warren buffett wealth is the transfer of money from the impatient to the patient so there we have it, everyone. Michael Yardney's take on FOMO and some warnings for people who are getting into the market. 
What do you reckon? I think some good, good suggestions there. So let's look at some solutions, some solutions. Now, I try to think about solutions to FOMO. And really the only one I could think of is get old. <laughs> get old. I mean, uh, okay. FOMO is going to affect you at whatever age you are, but the more life experience you have, the more times you've maybe made money or lo lost money, you've missed a great opportunity. And then a few years later, you realize, oh, well, I had another opportunity. You know, get old. I, I know it's probably not the best solution, but uh, let me know what else you can think of how someone can develop a tolerance for FOMO. Maybe getting into crypto is a good way. Get right in the waves because that's like a, a hyper compressed market. You can make a lot of money, miss opportunities, lose a lot of money all in, this, in the matter of a couple of days. Learn not to be greedy. You know, that, that can be quite a hard thing compared, particularly in this Instagram instant gratification world. You can constantly be be uh, comparing yourself to others and think, oh, look at what they have. Oh, I need to get that. I need this house. Or we need this one so we can entertain and bring the friends over. You need to show off and then you go into more and more debt. And learn to overcome that. The, the whole the whole meme of you will own nothing and be happy coming from the Great Reset in, or from the World Economic Forum, in some ways it's quite insightful. If you free yourself from this dependency on material things or thinking material things will be your journey to happiness, that's a good good point to be in in life to get to get to that point to stop just chasing for all this stuff I, I like watching some of the minimalist guys on youtube you know that have like nothing it's impossible for me i've got too many kids and, and you know family um yeah but it, it's just you know, fantasy I, I don't think I'd, I'd ever be able to handle it but still and always be skeptical guys always be skeptical i'm talking to some older family members who said yeah you know the market it goes up and down i remember he used to track it all the time he said i remember when it went down 30 percent there you just sit and just wait don't worry you know because it's uh, if they're people that are trying to catch the bottom of the market it's going to be tough and some more practical things we need local government to increase housing supply. That's the only way to address affordability in many regards. Don't vote for, for, for parties who limit development and construction and fight the NIMBY crowd, the greenies and hipsters, guys. Okay, this is a strategy that people will do to ensure the value of their investment properties remains high. So thank you all very much for joining me for this episode of Heiser Says. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. What do you think about Michael's uh, suggestions or things to watch out for are you suffering from FOMO how do you deal with it or have you learned to overcome it and what do you think about my advice about just getting old as always thanks for watching guys please like share subscribe to the channel if you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here there are a few ways you can support us you can join us on YouTube or Patreon you can support us using our affiliate links from Amazon eBay independent reserve or Aussie broadband you can also support us using um, uh, joining self wealth Meet RX, Perth Mint, or PayPal. Take care, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.